Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you that despite Fusion 2 being a fully featured navigation package, it's still easy to set up and use for general USB-L aided INS operations. You'll see the differences from the old Sprint software and how much easier and more user friendly Fusion 2 is to use. So, if we start with a new job, like it's the first one of the software, we're asked to fill in the job details. This is the information that's included in the header of any reports. A new concept from Sprint is surveys. This is more applicable to LBL operations, but all you need to worry about if you're working in WGS84 is to set the UTM zone you're working in, and to know that if you're changing UTM zones, you need to create a new survey to change it in the software. It just gives the user better control when working at sites that straddle UTM zones. Once that's done, we can add the Sprint Nav. We have a few options when connecting it. We can go directly to the PC COM port, use TCP IP, or connect through an interface box like the Sprint LCH or NSH, or use a third party serial to ethernet converter. Just bear in mind that the NSH isn't supported by the Sprint software. So if you think you might want to switch back for comparison, look at the other options for connections. To connect the Sprint Nav in the software, we just need to click on the setup cogs, right click on ROV1 and add instrument. Go to Sprint and choose the depth rating of your unit. You need to get this right as this sets the internal offsets for you. Most units are 4K rated. Then set the port you physically connected the unit to. I'm going to use TCP and you can see it's automatically set the default IP address for me. Click OK and now we see it's added three separate instruments to the vehicle and the internal offsets for each. So you just need to add the lever arms to the CRP and the results of the gyro cow to bring it into vehicle frame. Now the Sprint Nav comms animation pops up as it configures the unit and the setup LEDs go green. Next, we'll set up the USB-L feed. Right click on ROV1 again, add instrument and select USB-L, and then either GGA or SSB, depending on what data format the USB-L is sending. Set the port like before and click OK. The LED will go green if the USB-L is active. The ROV should now begin to navigate on the chart. I like to be able to compare the INS position to the raw USB-L as a gross error check. And you can enable this by clicking on the arrow in the toolbox in the bottom left. Click on the display checkbox for the solution without the INS settings. Now you should see both vehicles on the screen. It's also a good idea to rename the solutions as you'll need to know which is which when adding an output telegram later. We can also reset the INS here as it may have picked up some bad data as we set up the inputs. There are a couple of USB-L settings you need to be aware of. If Fusion 2 and the USB-L aren't time synced together, you'll need to tell Fusion 2 to accept the telegram on time of arrival and not to use the time in the telegram. The second thing is that some USB-L systems are notoriously optimistic for their performance and it's important that the INS doesn't give a false weighting to the USB-L. If it does, the INS position will get pulled around by the USB-L position noise. In here, we have the option to manually override the position error reported in the USB-L telegram. It's a 95% confidence level, so watch the USB-L position on the screen and measure the spread when the ROV is static. Finally, you're probably going to want to send some data to another system, and we can configure this in a similar fashion to adding an instrument. But this time, we click on Add Output, set the port, and click OK. Now click on Edit, and set the telegram source and type as required. That's the system set up and ready to go. 
To make it easier to QC the system performance, there are a couple of windows we can open. Click on the eye on the top left and select Navigation Status. This gives you a graphical representation of how well the sensor data fits in the INS algorithm. Each segment shows the residual for that data source. The bigger the green area, the bigger the residual. Ideally, we want small residuals. It also acts like the LEDs did in Sprint, where red indicates no data, orange bad data, and blue is not used. To keep the screen tidy, we can dock these by grabbing the window by the title bar like this. Another useful window is the text box. We can configure this to show live data like this. So that's that. I'm sure you'll agree that although there are lots of changes to Fusion 2 over Sprint, its intuitive layout and workflow makes it easy to set up and operate. If you already have a Sprint system configured, it only takes a few minutes to get this set up and running. Give it a try next time we have the ROV in the water running non-survey operations and I'm sure you won't look back. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please contact the survey support group at support at sonodyne.com. For more detailed information on this or on any of our other Sonodyne products, please check out the training pages on our website. Happy tracking and goodbye.